Ja, herzlich willkommen zu unserer Mission Safety Digital. Oh, welcome to um, Mission Safety Digital on the second um, date. The second day of the trade fair, we are live for you here, and we are very pleased to see you again. Tune in. We're going to use the German form "du" in um, our discussion. My name is Kim Pates, and I'm event manager for Drega, and I'm going to conduct you today through our sessions. But before we start, I want to look over to the Hall 6, um, because my colleague is there. Anna Marie, and she's got a guest. Hi, Kim. Thank you for the introduction. As you can see, I'm live here at the Trade Fair booths. For those of you who weren't here yesterday, my name is Anna-Lisa, and I'm going to um, be here all day. And I'm really pleased to be able to see, meet so many interesting people. For example, the service and um, sales manager for Germany. I'm very happy to have you here live beside us today. Yes, I'm also very pleased to be here. Thank you. Yesterday we saw you on through a video link, and today you're here in person. So the A plus A, that must be like a home game for you. How do you feel to be here again live? Well, what can I say? I'm really speechless in a way. It's really great after such a long time to be live and present at a trade fair. And then, of course, at the A and A, one of the biggest, one, if not the biggest, um, trade fairs for um, such products with people from so many countries throughout the world. And if you look at our portfolio, we really have a great uh, hygiene concept. Of course, there are some restrictions with the number of people at the booth you know we have certain regulations there but on the other hand i've also more space maybe more opportunity for meeting people that's really good and the whole concept with live streams is really excellent excellent um it was great yesterday but to be here live today is even better yes we have some very interesting things to show people today but let's first look at um, the trade fair in general yesterday you weren't here but I'd like to ask you, in general, you must be aware of the kind of um, customers that visit us here at, at our booth. Yes, there are not so many as usual, of course, for natural reasons, but the variety is just the same. We have people from work safety, we have craftsmen, we have plant fire services, fire prevention agencies, supply systems, medical systems. You know, the not so many in the quantitative level, but in quality, it's just as high as ever. Could you tell me what kind of products are the main highlights here that attract so much popularity? Well, we've divided this up a bit. You see um, on the other side, protect or here, protective protection, and then back there, gas detection systems. And that's really the great thing that you can see very interesting innovations in each area. And now, as regards um, servicing, you see over there the rental robot, uh, which um, allows our customers rent equipment from us and um, at short notice, just where according to their requirements and demands. And um, so stick around. We've got really a lot of interesting things to show you. Yes, one topic we're going to be focused on the next hour is smart safety. And we're going to let you go to look after all the customers coming around. That's why you're here. But thank you for speaking to us. Thank you, too. And I wish you all, you and the public, but also you and our team, every success and a lot of fun at the trade fair. Okay, now back to Kim in the studio. Thank you, Jörg. Thank you, Annalisa. We're going to see Annalisa again. As um, I said before, you know, we had great experiences yesterday, and I'd like to recap that very, very briefly for a review. And we're going to do this in a special way through the medium of art. And for that, we go to Berlin to our artist Ingrid. Could you maybe introduce yourself for those who weren't here yesterday? Who are you? What do you do? Hi, everybody who's just tuned in. Ingrid Wenz is my name. I'm an illustrator from Berlin. 
and I'm currently in my studio. That's why you see so many uh, colorful images behind me. And um, what I do, what I'm doing here is I'm accompanying this trade fair and um, I'm opening myself to stimulus, to inspiration from whatever happens, whatever I see at this trade fair, and then I'm going to turn them into artistic works, if I can. <coughs> we, I did many yesterday already on my first day, and maybe I'll have a chance to show you some of them. This was the first one. First, um, I through the trade fair booth and because there were so many people around uh, yesterday I had to include them and the enthusiasm I have to include that too and the lively exchange between the people I illustrated in this way so everything was very positive yesterday what else did we have we also had um, the subject demographic change yesterday and what that means for the um, staff of a company and also for the individual protection like some things I had to learn you know like about uh, overheating inside the suit that was all new to me also the subject of the multilingual teams and also breathing protection they were uh, topics we dealt with yesterday and I got a lot of uh, impressions and painted them this way also, you know, what we can do with um, breathing protection, the way it lets you do any kind of strain, strenuous work without any encumbrance. And here we have the um, mask dispenser. And it's something, I think I mentioned this already yesterday, it's something I'd love to have at home. Just you press a button and a mask comes out. Really great. And we also talk about um, pandemic precautions, precautions against the next pandemic, which is unfortunately apparently um, inevitable. And uh, that's why I'd like, um, I wanted to illustrate how with proper equipment and proper attitudes and preparatory work, you can really um, evade the worst of the future pandemics. Um, also time for pleasure, fun at the trade fair, time for a cafe, relaxation. And um, I'm going to be with you all day, so give me ideas, I need inspiration, I need stimulus to trigger artistic impulses in me. And I'm going to show you these creations afterwards. Yes, we're looking forward to seeing what you have to show us afterwards at the end of the session and in future sessions too today. So talk to you later. Bye now. Now, again, for those who are here for the first time with us, I'd like to um, point out a few things. As Ingrid mentioned, we have a chat function and uh, we have a back, back office with the people, experts, ready to um, take your feedback, ideas, answer your questions. We also have um, certain surveys planned, so we'd like to ask you to have your mobile phone ready with, um, I hope it's uh, QR code compatible with your QR code app, so you can communicate with us and give us certain feedback, answer certain questions which we may be asking very spontaneously. And um, afterwards, if you have anything to say to us, any contact you wish, any questions you have to ask, please use the email which you see illustrated here. Now, before we continue, I'm going to, we're going to look at a very brief video. Hello, and herzlich willkommen. Hello, a warm welcome to this year's A plus A. Ja, und uh, von Technik now, für das Leben zu uh, from technology for everyday life to digital solutions. Today we're going to talk about smart issues and specifically smart safety, that's the way we call it. And for that purpose I have Sheila here with me in the studio. Good morning, Sheila. 
Good morning, Kim. I'm really looking forward to this. And I think there's no better way to introduce a session with such a great start, including a bit of art in the morning. Great. Yes, we're talking about smart safety today. What does that mean exactly? Well, smart safety means specifically intelligent security and safety management, digital safety data management through networked um, data and connectivity. So smart safety really means uh, entering into the industrial Internet of Things. So in industry and in safety processes, so digital transformation um, doesn't stop with computers, of course. It goes into every aspect of our lives and especially in industry. So smart safety is very much the future of um, factories, production, machines and work safety. Sounds very interesting. Could you tell us what it means for us in Drega? Well, we have um, a slogan with a Drega that's called Safely Smart is our slogan. slogan. And by that we mean um, the expansion of our existing portfolio by digital elements, services, innovations and digital systems, individual systems, and they can include um, connected hardware, user-friendly cloud-based software, as well as applications or apps. And it also includes, and that's one of the most important things, of course, data transfer, digital data management, digital data visualization, and of course, most important of all, data science. So data, data, data is what I hear. Tell me, that sounds very dry, but what does it mean for you? Why does it excite you so much? Well, yes, it does sound very dry data, but you must remember that what data we're talking about. Data in our case can be measuring data positions, um, also data from people, physical things, and the number of the more data you can transfer, you can collect and render visible, then the more comprehensive will be your overview of um, a person, a situation, or a machine, or a process, or whatever. And the more we know about the actual situation, the more we can, of course, um, predict the future in terms of uh, environment protection, health protection. And in the industrial context, that means that when we have collected sufficient data, we can render that more efficient, more profitable, and we can ensure that the industries work with greater profitability and more care and less accidents. Could you um, tell us what exactly it could mean then? Give us more examples for a specific industry, for example. Well, I heard about Vision Zero. Maybe you could talk about that. Yes, Vision Zero, maybe some of you will be aware of the term. That's the very high uh, um, standard of industry or goal of industry to reach a situation where there will be zero uh, accidents, injuries and damage to the environment and to um, capital goods and assets. And that, of course, is something that we're all striving for. We, especially in Drega, we want to make our contribution. And one example in that regard could be, let's say, if there are several people present at a certain machine or system collecting gas detection data, and um, when they have collected data, then um, um, extra value of knowledge is generated by this group and this can then um, constantly improve the situation in relation to limit values. If, for example, we have um, put so many people, so many people have put their data into a machine and the trend has now changed that there are higher um, detection levels have been recorded but no alarm has been triggered yet, that means that we can see at an early stage and in advance that something is not correct, we can find the sources of the irregularity and take preventive measures. It just means that we will never be surprised by a situation that uh, environment, health, personal health and um, capital will be all together in one single plan. Great, I understand. What will happen if there's nevertheless uh, an accident despite these precautions? 
Well, I mean, then it's even more valuable, actually. You can see the value, especially in such cases of accidents, because it's very important then that you can react quickly, appropriately, um, get a good overview of the situation. That can be very important for the plant fire service, whether that's data from the particular site or toxic or explosive gases maybe that you need to know about or infrared images or whatever data you have can be immediately fed into a cluster so that the proper measures can be taken, whether that's evacuation or rescue measures. Okay, so not only the, um, there, this is very important, not only in industry, but also in your everyday life. Yes, exactly, and the more accurate the data are and the faster they're, they reach the decision maker, then the earlier the, prevent the me proper measures can be taken. Oh, I see. That's a really added value. Now, who, do, who are we uh, addressing, really, with these products and services? Well, generally, digital transformation in relation to work safety and machine safety and plant safety. Of course, it's something relevant for everybody, for every company, for every utility, corporation, whatever. The new element here is that security engineers work together with IT specialists and data specialists. They sit together with them to create uh, interfaces, RP systems, or process control systems will be developed then on that basis. Great, very, very um, interesting. I'm going to ask now for our viewers to give their opinions on this and uh, also maybe ask uh, answer a question for us and for this of course they need as i said before a smartphone with the um, qr code scanner map app and the question we have for you is here what smart devices or services do you use either in your private or in your business life so um, you can send in your answers there immediately we're going to check out now the answers as they come in but what about you, Sheila, as a marketing manager for Smart Safety? What about you? What do you use? <laughs> well, you know, um, I work a lot with smart equipment during my work, and sometimes I need a detox when I come back home. Back home, but of course, that's not really the case. You know, without the internet, I wouldn't see films or listen to music. My library would be much uh, smaller, and that's what we mean by shared economy. You know, that we buy content or we can rent content and that's what we do in Drega. We rent it out, uh, we lease out content, we have a special area for that, RSS, it's called Rental Services and um, your couple, I think you heard about that yesterday, he has this robot, this rental robot which I think he showed you yesterday, you know, that's not only a dispenser machine. It's an intelligent system, also a smart system that um, allows only certain authorized people take masks from the dispenser. So in that sense, it, it ensures that it's, uh, it ensures itself that the maintenance level is always right and it always has the products available, enough in stock. Okay, I see the first feedback here from my, um, from our viewers, and it looks like we've got certain digital natives here. Did you anticipate something like that? Yes, um, actually I do trust our viewers, and that does mirror the kind of experience we'd have, or actually your first um, initial impressions when you think about smart, you think of smartphone, Alexa, all of these things in your personal lives. Okay. Sheila, I'd like to uh, know, how can we ensure connectivity for these network devices? Well, our smart system has various forms of connectivity in plan. A lot of the devices have um, Bluetooth interfaces, and it just means the connectivity ru runs through also mobile telecom networks. We also have LoRa network connectivity. That's a very clever one that uses smart cities, infrared and various other forms of connectivity. And that's continuing to develop in that direction very positively, actually. 
Also cloud solutions, I heard. Um, how relevant are all of these solutions for the industry? Yes, you mentioned cloud, and a lot of people talk about that at the moment. And, you know, of course, cloud software is inevitable today. There are many, many advantages to cloud software. The first is that you can um, install it yourself very, very easily. Nobody has to come around. The second big benefit is you don't have to make any updates anymore. For our customers, cloud software is maintenance-free. The customer doesn't have to do um, updates, and really maintenance is all unnecessary. So the whole thing is very, very easy to use. And cloud software can also be used by every user who is authorized, regardless where he is, anywhere in the world, once he has the access data. And of course, in home office, so it greatly facilitates such work. And another major issue, of course, is security. A server in a company is, of course, much more op uh, vulnerable to hacking and also to physical damage from fire or maybe chemical damage or whatever than, let's say, a cloud based system. You know, the cloud based systems are just maintained by uh, professional um, companies and they, in turn, have also backups. So, no matter what happens, your data are protected. And when data, um, if customers wish us to help them, we can definitely give advice and support in um, integrating our customers in this cloud system. And in this way, we can also contribute more to the general cloud connectivity. Yesterday, we did a tour of the um, booth, and somebody mentioned connectivity there. So I'm going to go back now to Hall 6, back to Anneliese with a colleague, Sven. And uh, I'd like to... I'm looking forward to what you have to tell us. Yes, we're at the Trade Fair booth, and as you can see, I have a new expert beside me. Sven, it's great that you're here. Sven Schmelkamp, he has been part of the Traeger team for 25 years. And Sven, you are really the multiplier in terms of smart security and safety. Could you tell me about anything about that? Well, first of all, thank you for the very charming introduction. It's great to hear that smart safety is the challenge we face, further developments that we're conducting in our company. The impressions that we've got in the last few years is that the technology is there, we're looking for solutions, and um, we want to help our customers in digitization. The journey is on, it's going now, and we're on the bus, and we really are looking forward to steaming ahead. So, um, we're really looking forward to more to further developments. So you think customers, I hear, are generally reticent a little bit, but generally they're open. What kind of customers are they? Well, they're customers from a whole range of different um, sectors and uh, dis discussions. Uh, we've heard now people from processing industry, chemical industry, steel manufacturers, but also small term, uh, s small size companies, manufacturers, fair end, but also fire services. All of these can be customers for us who want to integrate digitization in their uh, value-added chain. They have problems with personal shortages, of course. They want to maintain, of course, all regulations and the rules of the game, and of course also all laws. But within these frameworks, they want to look in smart s for in smart solutions that can make their processes smarter, more efficient, safer, and of course more sustainable. And that's the challenge for us, to support them with hard solutions, um, with data, with our expertise, that is data we, we collect from a whole range of sources and we provide that expertise to our customers in a range of services. Oh, I see. So um, customers are really facing a whole bundle of challenges there. How can our s software solutions help our customers in that way? Well, we've got two software, well, actually one with two um, tasks. One is... Um, connection, correct, and they, uh, that collects data and it evaluates the data also historically. And then we also have the asset management. How do I, we maintain and manage, uh, let's say, a gas detection system and what knowledge and data can I collect 
from that to use in the future for prevention and increased efficiency. Okay, I'll give you an example now here. Now what we did is we created an environment and you know, most of our um, staff here have uh, one of these. There are several still lying around, actually, and I've prepared something for you here. You know, I've connected this with a smartphone and personalized. That means this gas detection device on the left-hand side knows that it's linked to me and that uh, I'm using it. And, of course, uh, it can be used by a whole range of different people at the same time. And what we see over here is the da dashboard for gas detection connect. And um, we can zoom in, zoom out, and you see uh, close to where we are now, so many people in Düsseldorf. Um, it tells us where we are. We're in hall six. So you see exactly where my device is, and then it's indicated over here that everything is perfectly safe here in the gas environment. That means it can localize every device and can measure all the environmental data, exactly. We connect all of these um, and we can see what the uh, situation is. Has it, is there an alarm? Is there a certain threshold value reached? And then we can bring these data that are generated by these detection devices into a certain context here and present them and process them. What's um, important here is not only to have live data but also retrospective, um, which are in from our own company, from our own experience, to identify hotspots and to know best how to react to the different impulses we get from the different locations. Okay, we see 14 are here. That's now, of course, a very important safety factor when you think of the industrial context. But it's not the only goal you have in terms of safety. What other does it um, provide? Well, it also provides, apart from safety, data, valuable data that you can use. Now, we're starting the entire um, making the connectivity of our gas detection um, <coughs> fleet of goods. So it's, um, you know, the main focus, as I said, is not just in um, on live detection, but also processing these data, comparing them with historical uh, data, making them available to certain experts, so we know what kind of people are in what area, who is in danger, who is exposed to certain risks, and um, what um, measures are to be taken appropriate, appropriately. Another um, process is that the data are fed straight into our customers' processes, you know, which just is a great um, boon for enhancing customers' Effective effectiveness and profitability. Okay, so this gives you information about the location, and I suppose the industry can use that too, you know, for locating its people. Exactly, the industry, the employer, knows where its people are. That, of course, is a bit sensitive information sometimes, you know, and you have to be deal with it very sensitively too. And, of course, some people don't really like that, probably at first glance, but, you know, we need, the, the employer sometimes needs to know where people were with certain devices, uh, where have they been before that, so they can better evaluate the uh, data and create heat maps, for example, um, just so it knows where to invest more um, value in the process, for example, maybe a new alarm system or whatever. But that's an individual thing um, that the customers will have to decide for themselves how best to use it. Okay, now you've mentioned a few interfaces. What happens when the customer wants a different kind of interface or a different system? How do we respond then? Well, um, Detection Connect is a cloud solution. Customer process, we talked about that um, a bit here, but they're very individual things. You know, even within a certain sector, each process inside um, the customer's business is very, very individual, very, very different. And accordingly, our solutions have to be versatile, flexible, so they can be integrated in every individual customer's systems. And we have a center here in Germany where we um, interact with the customers to find out what his challenges are, what his goals are, what kind of data we're working with. So you have to bring the right people together and connect it, to use the same word, to get um, an individual solution. Yes, that sounds like an excellent customer service. 
Um, what about yeah. asset management, which you also manage, mentioned? Well, asset management is actually part of gas detection, correct? It's also a cloud solution. I'm going to change our dashboard here and look at asset management. And you see we have an overview of uh, Exoc stations, all the different stations and the devices. You see all the different ga gas detection systems that are being tested here. One uh, is, um, you see here, it's ready for testing. That's why we have an indicator. So you have here a system that's very efficient, that keeps track of each individual system, its location, but also need for maintenance and need for update or whatever, and time of duration of deployment, whatever. Okay, so I can see that that saves time and personal and uh, helps productivity and profitability. Yes, exactly. What does the customer have to do? Well, getting the data in there is quite easy. But let's look here at a test. Now, the user will basically, he has nothing to do except um, turn it on, turn it off, and at the end of each um, shift, and he should test it, either at the beginning or the end of the day. So the docking station is um, networked with, the, with our detection cloud. So he simply lays it in there, close the lid, and then wait for the green light to appear. means that the uh, device is ready for use. So at the moment, the test is being conducted. It looks good. And there we have it, you know, that's really all the customer has to do. Well, that looks very, very easy. Tell me access to these devices, how is that managed? Well, I mean, that's the qualification of the indiv individuals, whether they're authorized to use it or not. And of course, that's also regulated by the by each um, employer. Now, the access to the data, that will also have to be done by data accessibility um, authorization for each individual. So whenever it makes sense for somebody, let's say a safety engineer, somebody in charge of uh, asset management or maintenance of the technical devices, they and maybe only they will have access to certain fields of the data, whereas others will have access to different details. Okay, now you've explained to us who that's relevant for. Um, I think transparency seems to be a very big thing here. Yes, exactly. Transparency is a really, really big thing here, no matter how big the fleet is. Um, efficiency, clean documentation, that's also important. And that brings us right over to CSE Connect. And I'm going to bring you over to that now. So could you tell us something about that? Well, the colleague here, our model, you know, he has a, a job. That means this um, container over here, he has to measure that, free measurement. Free measurement means it's a process that takes place um, in relation to um, working authorization. And we see here, we're live that um, you can make orders, uh, insert stipulations and specifications, and these orders will be employed like that. First of all, you've got a free measurement order, and we talked about individual process. So he integrates this directly in this process, that it becomes an integrated part of um, an operation authorization and the customers do this completely digitally so we have uh, we can integrate that directly and fully in our smart system okay great thank you very much Sven now progressive customers uh, we have a few of them in the studio so I'm going to go back to the studio there great Annalisa and Sven for this great introduction that was very um, full and very interesting, I think, at least for me. Let's hear where the what the other people thought. Now, as she said, I've got two experts here, a Dickner, Mr. Steinbock. You are um, operator of um, a large tank corporation in Gelsenkirchen. How, how can we imagine your materials? What's um, stored there. Well, we have a tank warehouse in um, 
Gelsenkirchen, 150,000 cubic meters of storage capacity. We storage fuels and a lot of chemical products for our customers there. And these things are delivered by pipeline, pipelines and boats and trucks, of course. And um, it goes out by tanks for trucks and um, trains and ships. How do you think Draeger Safety could help you in this regard? Well, these tanks have to be um, maintained and go for technical inspection and for cleaning. And that, of course, um, requires a lot of free measurements. So the gas detection technology of Draeger is definitely a big help for us in this regard. What about CSE Connect? How could you profit from this? digitization in this regard. Well, the free measurement process is now quite standardized and normally it's um, based you know, on certain paper documents too. And if you follow this process, the free measurement is, first of all, we give an order for it, and then the measurement takes place. It's transferred onto a paper form, and this paper form has to be brought back. First of all, it has to be assessed and get approval, and in the end, it means that the operation can be approved and authorized. This is something that takes a lot of time before going from field to the office and then for authorization and final approval. So there is need for optimization there. We already recognized and we found that Draeger can really help us significantly along this path. So we decided um, to use an electronic approval system and we installed it um, a few years ago, uh, electronic work permit system, it's called in English, or permit to work system. And the idea is to integrate the free measuring proce process. And with um, this detection connect was an obvious um, system that we could use in this regard. Okay, thank you. Now before going on to Mr. Dickenham, do you think um, you can put a figure on this efficiency at the moment? Well, it's not only time saving, I think 50% at least, I would say, in terms of time saving and free measuring process. But you also have to think that the error quote, uh, the error rate and all the paper transmission and transfer has been greatly enhanced. The digital data comes straight into the system all the way up to approval. And that definitely makes the whole process much safer and more reliable. And the waiting time times for contracts have been significantly reduced simply because we don't have to wait for the measuring results so much. Okay, Dekenem, could you maybe um, introduce yourself? Klaus Dekenem is my name. I work for Ulzine and Consulting. I'm a partner manager and um, authorized signatory. And um, I accompanied this project in part that we're talking about here. Is that a typical case for your company? Yes, it's a very typical case. You know, first of all, we're involved in the delivery of solutions, but also system integration, IT, consulting. We are a group of six companies with uh, dealing with different areas of IT, consulting and program development. And that goes all the way from module solutions to strategy, IT strategies and process optimization, IT safety concepts, and everything that digitization entails. How could you um, find that uh, this system helps your solutions? Well, we have the SAT cockpit. We've, uh, that's a cloud solution for work safety. 
This cockpit system is multilingual and the services are offered through a cloud. And um, the purpose is to uh, facilitate this release of the permit for work and um, testing, of course, prior to that. And the special requirements um, are integrated in our system. And we also have implemented suggestions from customers and from the authorities, and I think that allows us to make a very s individual and well-adjusted system for everybody. And in another step that we took last year, we have s integrated CSE Connect. Connect. That means we um, created an interface and some developers created it for us, and we're now able to carry out free measurement orders and we can send them from our system, send the orders from our system, then we get the measurement data back and then they are used then for making our final assessments and leading to approval. And um, in this way we comply with all standards and stipulations from the relevant client. What about data security and data privacy and um, general security and safety? What are your concerns about that? Well, actually, I don't really have concerns about that. Sometimes our customers do have certain concerns. When we talk about that Sarah cockpit, our system is uh, a cloud-based system. So they take that very seriously, and sometimes um, questions arise, but for example, the way Draeger with its cloud systems, we also use cloud systems that are exclusively based on um, very secure servers in the legal area of our customers. That sounds a bit strange, like a legal term. I mean, basically, I can say that they're all in Germany because we believe that we are best placed in that way to provide our software and to provide guarantees for security of the data when they're based locally in Germany. Now, confidential data, more sensitive data, Mr. Schmellenkampf will also, he also mentioned that then these data are encrypted before transmission and only users with the due authorization, very strictly controlled authorization, have access to these data. So it's a very sophisticated authorization and permit concept. Are these solutions that you've created, do you think they could be an example for other companies? Well, I think they could be. I hope they are. You know, for me, that's uh, created from interaction between TransTank and us, and that was a very fruitful partnership, I think. And I think that this system that we've developed for this particular customer can be quite easily adjusted to other systems to other customers with different systems through connectivity, let's say gas detection or anything else. We have a very good and strong and stable software and we can provide very um, reliable, safe and environmentally um, compatible solutions. And I'd also like to appeal to Traeger to continue along the way they're going, to continue to take part in these projects and continue to work with us if possible. That was really a very fruitful cooperation for everybody. Thank you both for um, taking time to speak to us today. I'm going to go back now to my colleague. She, Sheila, she's waiting for me here. I'd like now to look into the future, Sheila. What do you think, what plans are around at the moment? Well, one major issue at the moment that research centers and universities are looking at, as well as industrial systems, utility providers, are all looking at this, that's called predictive maintenance. And the idea is that you can see as early as possible um, future wear, future maintenance needs, future service needs, using sensor data. Or other data and intelligent systems or artificial intelligence, you know. Already we can predict very, very well in this respect. You must remember that every a fault that's discovered spontaneously, every f breakdown that's predicted. You know, all of these things, faults and breakdowns, cost a lot of money. So every one of them that we now predict 
saves money, and that's what we want to do with this predictive approach in relation to maintenance and service, and that has to be always included in the calculation of profitability. And the more accurate the data are, the more helpful they will be in providing safe, reliable, and environmentally friendly and more efficient solutions. And this will allow us to, every company, to take the appropriate measures in due time. And one example actually comes from the world of art. I think maybe some of you saw about maybe two weeks ago um, Beethoven's Symphony, the Sixth Symphony, I think, you know, has been digitized, like from the, no, sorry, another symphony which he had written but never completed. The artificial intelligence was able to identify how the work would have been completed, how it would ideally have been completed in line with the work of Beethoven up to that point where he no longer continued with this symphony. So that I thought was very interesting, and that's in a way similar Maybe it's not a good example of predictive maintenance, but it's a good example of how you can use um, artificial intelligence. Anything else, like maybe industrial drones, or I've heard about? Yes, drones, people talk about them, and robots. Of course, they've been around in industry f now for quite some time. There are so many um, protected and patented uh, solutions and hardware everywhere where people maybe could be in danger or at risk or where the work is very, very difficult or maybe where people can't access, access certain working points. Then with the age of, let's say, with mobile gas detection systems or other sensors, you can collect data at certain points, transmit them digitally, digitally and then dock into external hardware and generate measurement data there where we were unfortunately un not able to work before. So this is now my personal interest. What I'm going to talk about now, apart from robots and drones, there are other trends, for example, augmented or virtual reality. And this can be used ideally in, let's say, fire protection services for training personal favorite uh, favorite subject of mine is tracking and tracing that is tracking people tracking objects that are moving around and identifying them and you can give them certain authorization or certain features can be transmitted to these items or to these people by um, connectivity and I think these are the trends that are for me, most interesting at the moment. Great, thank you very much. We really learned a lot today. And because um, we learned so much, I'd like to see what our friend Ingrid in Berlin has been doing with all this, all these ideas. Hi, Ingrid. Hi. How do you think? Um, how smart are you? Well, I hope I'm smart enough. I'm also, of course, I use digital as much as um, I can. Uh, now, I was able to, um, I can use digital equipment and one of the re uh, quite well and quite speedily, and one of the reasons I can is because I learned analog so well in my past. And I'm going to show you some results of that now. What can you show us? Well, I've got some pictures. I don't have the 10th, 11th or 12th symphony from Beethoven, but I have a few um, pictures. And one is Smart Safety from Drega. That's safely smart, and that's what it looks like. So here you see the networking connectivity, um, safety management, safety management, and safety data management. And what does that look like? Well, it's no longer somebody looking into a glass bowl, a crystal ball, but it's something that we experience uh, every day, or at least is experienced in the different um, industries. And here you see the software cloud and the apps data transfer, data science, and data management.
That's the way I very naively picture that. Okay, uh, you know what I me mean, I hope. And digi data visualization, here you see the artist. Of course, they mentioned also the visions, you know, vision zero. That means that all accidents would be avoided, or if an accident ever were to take place, the reaction could be very quickly, and the imagines of gas detection could connect. I think I had time to squeeze that in too. Also, cyber security. And Sheila also mentioned, I think, a word cloud when you got the feedback from your viewers. One major um, theme there seemed to be home office. And I also drew that for you in the hope that smart safety will also help us at home. And uh, we also had guests in the studio. I don't know what it's like um, in their places of work. I don't know what a tank warehouse is, but I imagine that maybe um, it would be great if they can really relax at home with their pets and still keep full and accurate and reliable um, observation and monitoring of their systems. Thank you very much, Ingrid. We're really looking forward to um, future work of you. Now we've come to an end. We're a little bit over the time. Could you maybe give us a few closing words? <laughs> well, just the future of Draeger and the future of all of us is safely smart. Thank you very much, Sheila. Now, some organizational information. We're going to continue at uh, 1 o'clock. If you have any questions, just um, send us, use our email if you wish. And we have nothing else to, s have nothing else to say except enjoy the video.